What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. Today, we've got an interesting lineup of stories for you. We've got chip company spinoffs, new SUVs, and after almost a decade, or maybe even a decade, Tesla finally putting on the road their robo taxi. Now, before we jump in, obviously I'm bullish on Neo. I've been bullish on Neo from day one, but none of these things happen in isolation in today's stories um, or today's episode is all about connecting the dots. They're part of a bigger transformation happening right now. Let's start with the biggest uh, story in my opinion, Neo's uh, potential chip spinoff. This is chess, not checkers, people. On June 17th, Neo quietly registered a new company with about $1.39 million in capital. The legal representative is Neo's VP, who came from Xiaomi's chip division back in November 2020. And let me tell you, this guy knows semiconductors inside and out. Here's what's fascinating. According to sources close to the company, Neo plans to bring in strategic investors Uh, for this company while maintaining control. They're essentially spinning off what's currently an internal business unit into an independent entity that can take orders from other automakers. Think about timing here. The Shenji chip launched in December 2023 and their flagship uh, sedan, the ET9, which started deliveries in March, packs two of these chips. The refreshed ET5, ET5 Touring, ES6, and EC6 each get one Shenji chip. That's real deployment real scale but here's the kicker william lee himself said back in march if you want to buy the best chips you go to neo that's not just swagger that's a business model pivot now let's put this into perspective neo previously mentioned or lee previously mentioned that developing the shenji chip is what it cost to or cost the same amount as it costs to deploy a thousand battery swapping stations. We're talking serious money here. Neo's first generation battery swapping station costs about 3 million RMB and third generation stations run about 1.5 million RMB. So we're looking at somewhere around 1.5 to 3 billion uh, RMB in development costs for this chip. That's a massive investment and now they want to monetize it beyond their own vehicle. Smart move, Absolutely, but there's competition. Xpong launched their Turing AI chip for the G7 SUV, and they're also opening it up to the entire industry. In fact, reports suggest that they're working with Volkswagen to integrate the Turing chip into Volkswagen vehicles in China. This isn't just about chips, folks. This is about who controls the brains of autonomous vehicles. Whoever wins this race doesn't just supply hardware. They potentially influence the entire software ecosystem. Speaking of strategic moves, let's talk about Neo's upcoming brand, Envo, and the L90 SUV. This is where things get really interesting from a marketing standpoint. Shen Fei, who replaced Alan I as um, Envo president, announced that the L90 will begin pre-sales in early July. This will be his first major pivot since taking over. The L90 is positioned as a flagship three-row SUV, so think family hauler with some serious tech. Here's what really caught my attention. Shen Fei mentioned that NEO operates battery swapping stations on highways at an average interval of 180 kilometers, providing charging efficiency equivalent to 20C. For context, that's incredibly fast charging capability through their swap network. But here's the strategic context that everyone's missing. The L90 SUV announcement came the same day that uh, Xiaomi revealed their YU7 SUV for June 26. This isn't a coincidence. This is market positioning in real time. The YU7 is expected to compete uh, directly with Tesla's Model Y and could reshape pricing in the mid to high SUV segment. Envo knows this, which is why they're emphasizing the uh, L90's three row capability and spatial freedom. They're not going head to head with the YU7. They're positioning themselves above it as a premium option in this segment. The road is clear. The L60 launched in September. The L90 launched in Q3 2025 and the L80 coming Q4 2025. According to regulatory filings, the L80 will be a five seat version of the L90. That's a complete SUV lineup covering different family sizes and price points. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room tesla's robo taxi network finally launching after years of promises nine years to be specific on june 22nd tesla officially launched their robo taxi service in austin texas the fee affixed 
$4.20 per ride. Their fleet, about 10 to 20 modified Model Y vehicles running Tesla's full self-driving software. Here's what's real. They're operating at 6 a.m. or from 6 a.m. to midnight in geofenced areas of South Central Austin, avoiding complex intersections. Each vehicle has a safety monitor in the passenger seat with emergency stop capability. There's biosensors monitoring passenger health, remote monitoring systems, and privacy protections with cameras and mics off by default. This service is invitation-based for um, Tesla employees, car owners, and Powerwall users is essentially a controlled beta test. But let's talk about Musk projections versus reality. He says the fleet will expand to a thousand vehicles within a few months and expects over one million self-driving Teslas by the end of 2026. Goldman analysts predict 2,500 taxis by the end of 2027. Morgan Stanley and Morningstar think that large-scale deployment won't happen until 2028. That's a massive gap between Musk projections and Wall Street's expectations. Meanwhile, companies like Waymo, we've got them here in Phoenix, operate around 1,500 robo taxi commercially across multiple cities. Tesla's playing catch up in a market where they're supposed to be the leader. So what does all this mean? We're watching different approaches to the same kind of transformation. Neo's building an ecosystem, chips, batteries, charging infrastructure, multiple brands. They're not just making cars, they're creating the foundation for others to build on. The chip spinoff could generate revenue while uh, their vehicle sales uh, scale up over time. Tesla is finally delivering on their robo taxi promises, but clearly they're behind uh, the competitors and it seems like their projections could be a little off. However, the vertical integration and manufacturing scale could accelerate deployment once they solve the technical challenges. Xpong and other companies are following similar strategies to NEO, developing proprietary tech and then opening it up to other companies for additional revenue stream. The broader theme here is the monetization of R&D investment. These companies spent billions of dollars developing autonomous driving tech, chips, and infrastructure. This was for their own vehicles, but now they're looking to amortize those costs across the entire industry. For investors, this creates interesting dynamics. Traditional automotive supply chains are being disrupted, and these new tech companies well, they're very much integrated. The winners won't just be car manufacturers, it'll be the companies that control critical components like chip, software, and charging infrastructure. That's a wrap for today's episode of the Courtside Financial Podcast. We've covered um, chip spinoffs coming out of EV companies. We've covered Tesla's uh, robo-taxi network finally coming into fruition and manifesting. And lastly, we've covered SUV launches. The industry is evolving from pure electric vehicle competition to pure technology platform competition. And as always, I want your thoughts. Are these moves strategic moves that are smart business decisions or signs of companies uh, struggling to consistently hit or maintain profitability? Thanks for listening. I'll catch you all in the, new, in the next episode. Uh, stay tuned for more insights. Great to be back.